Hi again, and welcome to Pearl Magazine. The National People's Congress passed a controversial bill last month to overhaul Hong Kong's electoral system. The pro-establishment camp claims that within the first 10 days, they received 2.3 million signatures supporting the bill. But the path ahead is dotted with questions and uncertainty. What exactly did the NPC Standing Committee pass? What do key amendments to the basic law mean for average Hong Kongers? And how do authorities plan to build a new democratic election system with Hong Kong characteristics? The day after the NPC Standing Committee passed the amendments, this Chinese Townsman Association went to the streets to ask for signatures in support of the move. Chairperson Yang Yuk Sing wants the public to have a better understanding of why the Standing Committee overhauled the electoral system. This fixes loopholes in our elections. In doing this, the system is improved, and Hong Kong will be better tomorrow. The decision to overhaul the electoral system of Hong Kong was passed in March by the NPC with zero votes against the bill. In its decision, the Standing Committee amended the Basic Laws Annexes 1 and 2. It's altered the way the Chief Executive is selected and the formation of the LegCo. The Election Committee also sees significant changes in its function and formation, which are considered the core issues in the shake-up. Albert Ho ran for Chief Executive in 2012. He says that the central government has a lot more control now in the new composition of the election committee. I'm not surprised. It's the very thing we suspected, that a huge change would fundamentally revamp the election structure so that the central government could have an even more all-round control to dictate election results. It's very clear that the safety factor is extremely high. It's expressed in a very complicated way, but in reality, it could be concluded that this will be a system with pre-established results. It's no different to an appointment system. The election committee is deemed by the central government as the most loyal committee led by patriots so that Hong Kong can be wholly ruled by patriots. The current 1,200-strong election committee will be expanded to 1,500 and divided into five sectors. Most subsectors within the first sector, the industrial, commercial and financial sectors, have lost a seat. The third commercial subsector is added and has 17 seats. The second sector of professionals has seen more significant changes. This sector now includes subsectors sports, performing arts, culture and publication, as well as social welfare, which have been moved from the third sector. Their seats have been reduced by half. In addition, some other subsectors have been merged, such as the medical and health services, reducing their seats by half. Other election committee members will be nominated, elected or even appointed by relevant Chinese organizations. <laughs> Some of the functional constituencies, especially those made up of professionals, could previously vote for those aggressive young professionals who oppose the central government. The electoral reform is to reduce the number of election committee members who support the opposition. Grassroots associations and associations of Chinese townsmen are the new additions to the third sector. Grassroots, labor, religious and others. This is our rally supporting the police. This is us giving out face masks. And this is the tradition of giving out Chojiao mandarins. Yang Yuk Sing is the chairperson of the 50,000 strong Kowloon East Charon Association, 
a Chinese Townsmen Association of relatively considerable size. He says the association serves not only its members, but also promotes Chu Chao culture and is involved in many community services. They consider themselves representative of a grassroots organization. In the future, there is a possibility for them to join the election committee. He says this is a reflection of the importance placed on Chinese townsmen associations. Also a member of the Political Consultative Conference of the Guangdong Province, he says he is very interested in participating in the committee. The MPC decided that there will be an addition of 60 seats. If we from Chu Chao could get a few seats, that would be great. We get more representation. Therefore, if I'm given the chance to take the post, I'll be very happy to. I'll speak up for Hong Kong. That's not just because I'm a delegate to the Guangdong Political Consultative Conference that I'm patriotic. I think it's a prerequisite quality. As for the fourth sector, it consists of LegCo members and delegates from district organizations. Representatives of mainland-based Hong Kongers are newly added to the sector. However, all 117 district council seats have been scrapped. In their place are representatives from area committees, district fight crime committees, and district fire safety committees, totaling 156 seats. Members of these three committees are all appointed by the government's Home Affairs Department. District councillors are the only people who are elected by universal suffrage. You're now saying that they're not representative and had their right to vote denied than to give their seats to district committees? In the past, they were all appointed. From now on, it's probably no longer the case. I am sure the central government will draw up a list and delegate them to different districts. Our committee members or workers come from all walks of life, including members and stakeholders of the local community. Such Good headmasters, NGO representatives, is very diverse. I says the primary role of the Fight Crime Committee is to be the bridge between the police force and the public. The Fight Crime Committee is relatively low. Our primary role is to strengthen the contact between the police and the public. I used to be a district councillor, so of particular help in this regard. Joe Lai was the vice chairman of the Wong Tai Sin District Council, a position that enabled him to join the election committee as a district councillor back then. However, he lost his seat in the 2019 district council elections. He is now a member of the fight crime committee, meaning that he will now have a chance to join the election committee again. I had no idea about the possibility of joining the election committee when I decided to join any of the government-appointed committees. Secondly, it's up to me to decide whether I join the election committee. Even if I decide to join, whether my qualification are endorsed is still up for debate. Zhou Lai was not alone. Take Wong Tai Sin District as an example. Ex-district councillors Li Tak Hong, Ho Hon Man, Yun Kok Kung and Lam Man Fai may fall in the same category in terms of election committee qualifications. Among the 117 seats of election committee taken up by district councillors, Half of them are also members of these district-based committees. Also lost their seats in the 2019 district council election.
Rita Fan is a former member of the Standing Committee of the NPC. Advocated for the scrapping of district councillors in the election committee, Rita says the functions of the district council and the three district-based committees are similar, that they know their respective communities very well. I am very much in favour of them participating because this is helping the police force to ensure that people's uh, property and life are being protected and also ensuring that the schools are not contaminated by uh, criminal elements. She says such a role could originally be played by district councillors, but she thinks that they are increasingly preoccupied by other issues. The district council has become more and more political day by day. They are not doing their job. So to remove all the district council representatives from the election committee and from the legislative council, I think, it's a right move. As for the Hong Kong delegates to the NPC and CPPCC, they've been transferred to the brand new fifth sector and take up 190 seats. Local delegates to the national bodies have also been added. Lao Siu Kai says the distribution of seats has changed the political landscape for the traditional pro-establishment camp. <laughs> Many patriotic organizations are added, such as the Chinese Townsmen Associations and grassroots groups. The seats of members of the NPC or CPPCC in particular, CPPCC, have been increased significantly. Such changes are to expand the proportion of patriots within the election committee. In contrast, those traditionally included, such as the professional and business sectors, are reduced in the past, the election committee favoured businesses, large corporations and professionals. Now the middle class and grassroots have a larger presentation. The election committee has also seen an expansion of its function, in addition to nominating and electing Executive, it is also responsible for nominating and electing legislative councillors. Stay with us. Welcome back. Since the handover in 1997, the Legislative Council has seen four rounds of reform, with gradual increases to the number of directly elected seats each time. The abrupt changes made in the latest electoral reform introduced by the central government have introduced participation by the election committee, whose members now make up the largest proportion within a total of 90 seats. Directly elected seats have been cut to 20. Some call the reforms a step backward for democracy, but others frame the changes as a way to put the city's political scene back on track. At the end of 2020, after the pandemic resigned en masse, the total number of legislators was reduced from 70 to 43, with 41 of them from the pro-establishment camp. The amendments to the rule of procedure and many other bills were passed with no objections. Rita Fan was a veteran legislative councillor and was once the chairperson. She believes that the Legico will be much more efficient after the changes. I agree that it is a change, but it is a necessity. What we wanted is to have some efficiency in the administration. And that efficiency can only be reached if Hong Kong has a certain degree of executive-led government. Annex 2 of the Basic Law, amended by the NPC Standing Committee, significantly changes the composition and the formation of the Legico. The Legico has been expanded from 70 seats to 90. The distribution of seats is also changed. 
directly elected seats are reduced to 20, while the functional constituency seats are reduced to 30. The reintroduced election committee will choose 40 members, taking the largest proportion of the LegCo. How the role of the LegCo will change in the future lies in these key 40 seats. The increase of legislative councillors who are elected by the election committee, I believe uh, their views will be closer to that of the chief executive. They're elected by the same group of people. So the chief executive will be more able to find some allies in the council. She says this will help enhance the likelihood of achieving an executive-led government. On the other hand, the only seats directly elected are drastically reduced from 50% to just 22%. If you try to diminish the Hong Kong people's uh, uh, views in the Legislative Council by reducing their proportion in, in, the, in the council and adding into some uh, election committee members who can never be responsible to the Hong Kong people, then how can you get the uh, support from the Hong Kong people? I think the role of the Legislative Council is to monitor the government. It's a kind of power balance between uh, the legislature and the administration. And the changes now they are making is not helping in that area at all. In the early days of the handover, the LegCo consisted of seats that were directly elected, as well as those elected by functional constituencies and the election committee. In 1998, 10 seats were elected by the election committee. In 2000, that was reduced to six. By 2004, all election committee seats were scrapped. In 1998 and 2000, Rita Fan was voted into the LegCo by the election committee. I prepare my political platform and then send it out to all the uh, members of the election committee. And then I will ring them up, asking for a chance to talk to them uh, in person. Uh, some of them who are very encouraging, I say, oh, we know you and we know what you have done and we'll support you. Hey, move on. Hey, move on. In 2004, Rita won for the first time in a direct election. She says that regardless of how one enters the LegCo, that person is still answerable to the Hong Kong public. Article 68 of the Basic Law stipulates that the ultimate aim is to elect the LegCo by universal suffrage in a gradual and orderly process in the actual situation at any given point. But the opposition camp thinks that the current situation in Hong Kong is a major regression. This is a photo of the Provisional Legislative Council with the Chief Executive, Frederick Fung, La Chong Kwok, Mok Ying Fan and me, and also ex-Democratic member Dominic Chen. Before the handover, the British Hong Kong government restructured the LegCo, essentially granting Hong Kong universal suffrage. At that time, the Chinese government resented these changes and decided to start their own provisional legislative council that was responsible for lawmaking in the early days of the handover. Bruce Liu is a provisional legislative councillor in the pan-democratic camp. He says the new changes introduced by the central government are aimed at forming a LegCo that it can trust, which is a situation similar to the formation of the Provisional Legislative Council back in 1997. If 40 of the 90 LegCo seats are selected by the election committee, it's not even easy for candidates to apply. Some form of negotiation will take place before you could become a candidate. By then, there'll be a specific list to nominate certain people. It's like time traveling back to the Provisional Legislative Council 30 years ago. There were 60 seats in the Provisional Legislative Council. However, because of the boycott of the Democratic Party, only five pandem candidates joined the council. During the handover, we overestimated ourselves. Our party didn't stand in solidarity, and we failed to convince other pandems to play our parts at the Provisional Legislative Council. We were powerless. It is projected that the opposition camp could win up to 10 seats from direct elections. 
that, together with their edge in certain functional constituencies, would still only give them less than 20% of the seats. What's the point of the pandems to take so few seats? I think we still play an important role. It's not a matter of how many seats, but whether we have a platform to voice our views and stance. However, Albert Ho says the opposition camp of today has entirely different considerations than they did in 1997. Politicians these days face extreme pressure, with many of the pro-democracy leaders, including ex-lawmakers jailed or detained, awaiting trial without knowing how long they must wait to get the pro-democracy candidates who aren't jailed yet to run in a highly controlled election under such a vile atmosphere is not easy. Many question the meaning of this. It's not a straightforward task, even if one were to run for the LegCo. There are many obstacles to overcome. Legical hopefuls must be able to get at least two nominations from each of the five sectors of the election committee and to pass the assessment of the candidate eligibility review committee. It is very difficult for especially the opposition, the pro-democracy came to get nominations. The people in the fifth sector, it is not up to them to decide whether or not they can nominate uh, pro-democracy came uh, uh, politicians. It is Beijing who can actually decide. If Beijing believes that, uh, well, they want some more oppositions, then they may allow them to nominate us. Since the pandemic's resignation on mass last year, the Democratic Party has been asked many times whether they will continue to participate in future elections. I think we are trying to measure what exactly we can achieve with the seats, no matter it is inside the Legislative Council or as just a Legislative Council, maybe you can achieve something. How important are they in, in, the, pro, in the process of uh, fighting for democracy? Uh, and at the same time, we don't want to lose our, our principle. Uh, we don't want to be like seen as cultural to, uh, to, to get the nomination from especially the fifth sector. If a person is very attracted by the idea of Western democracy and has a lot of views about how the government can improve and have never done anything which is um, unpatriotic, then I don't see why that person cannot try to seek nomination. In the shake-up of the electoral system, there are changes to the functional constituencies as well. Seats for the district councillors have been scrapped. The medical and health services constituencies have been combined into one. A new constituency has been introduced, which includes local deputies to the NPC, CPPCC and national bodies. The commercial constituencies have an extra seat. The 28 functional constituencies have one seat each. However, the Labour functional constituency will have three. As for voter status, nine of the constituencies are elected by individual voters, while the rest are elected by corporate voters. Lao Siu Kai says the central government hopes to tackle Hong Kong's deep-rooted social issues. In governing Hong Kong, it will rely even more heavily on patriots to formulate and implement policies for Hong Kong. To push for a transformation of Hong Kong's economy and society, such changes and development would unavoidably be a shock to Hong Kong's existing stakeholders, interests, touching a nerve of those with vested interests, causing resistance and even confrontation. Therefore, the central and the SAR governments must be able to depend on a LegCo looking after the greater good. That's Pearl Magazine for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next time.